Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Rock and Beards podcast. This is the show where we go through the rock slash metal slash whatever albums track by track, give you thoughts and opinions on every single song. My name is Holden Stefan Roy. Today, I'm going to be talking about Slipknot's new album, We Are Not Your Kind. So before I get into it, I'm going to do the intro, babe. You can check the description of the video if you want to see when we actually start talking about every single song and whatnot. But in the meantime, I want to start it off letting you you know i know that i'm not really a professional with this um there's a huge chance that a person coming to watch a video of this length about a slipknot album often is a really hardcore fan or somebody who really cares a lot about the band and typically that means you'll have spent more time with it generally than i will have and i like to let everybody know that up front and to be super candid so that way y'all can leave some comments and we can have a little discussion based off of whatever you know we talk about in the video and that gives me more insight and it gives me more stuff to look up and Google so that, you know, when we go talk about other Slipknot albums or whatever, or maybe Stone Sour or whatever it may be, uh, I can be a little bit wiser. And just seeing your passion and what makes you like or dislike the different things in these projects kind of gives me a wider scope of understanding of how to even just do this whole type of thing. All that to say... I really appreciate every interaction that we get on this channel. And a couple weeks back, um, we did the Tool Fear Inoculum album. And on that, got an awesome comment from Lindell Williams, who, who's a pretty pretty awesome regular. And he said, Already I can tell this is one of those album experiences. From the album cover, it appears as if they're going to take me down a wormhole. And the sound already seems to be suggesting the same. Take me away. I didn't actually catch that when I did the review. So I thought that was a really cool comment that almost added value to like anyone who checks the comments after the fact so you can be like lindell and you can add value to the review in your own way on that note i'm gonna get into it pretty shortly so before i do special thanks to the patrons is milky dempsey chris prado jonathan barnes lindell williams uh dj black hurricane and Connie sparks they're pretty awesome people we'll shut them out again at the end as we discuss that but while you're still watching let you know they're cool people and on that note, it's time to get into the Slipknot We Are Not Your Kind review. So I like to start off every single episode um, kind of describing my familiarity with the band. I mean, the goal of this whole show is to, to look at albums, not singles, but like albums and to go through the experience again. Something I once did when I was a youth listening to, you know, CDs back on my disc, man, and uh, moved into the MP3 era. And then we got to the Spotify era. And then for a long time, um in between spotify and i guess discs what i would do is put like a couple hundred songs on my phone and that was it for like a year and a half until i got like bored and then because it takes so long at that period to download and find everything youtube to mp3s blah awful periods and spotify came and i got really into singles and then i did this album review thing and i realized that albums are just a completely different beast than singles so i'm just curious which you prefer do you like the full album experience or are you just more interested in finding the songs you're going to listen to cherry pick them and bounce up with that anyway for me i got really fascinated with it so we started going through these albums track by track but basically i look at my musical life like prior to 2016 I, I looked at music a certain way and now i see it completely differently on that note um one of the things i discovered is that how long you've listened to a band and how familiar you are with the music really greatly impacts how you feel about it as an example i'm a huge fan of the marshall mathers lp i knew that thing like by heart when i was a teenager so it was impossible to like fully look at that album objectively that nostalgia factor kicked in whereas when eminem drops a new album today again been an eminem fan since i'm a kid i have a whole way of looking at his music where i almost can't objectively hear what he does anymore i have my expectations and things like that good or bad whatever that may be that's just how i kind of look at the situation so i feel like it's it's fair for me to tell you where i'm at with that and then if you want to let me know in the comments where you're at with that too it kind of lets us communicate a little bit better in, in my little opinion here um on that note, Slipknot is a band I am familiar with um, because I was 12 years old in 2000 and new metal was the shit. And I don't know if it's inappropriate to call Slipknot a new metal band, but I would from what I remember of their earlier work. And, I mean, there wasn't that many things I heard as a teenager that had somebody spitting rhymes, like spit it out literally as a song. Blew my freaking mind. It brought the hip hop kind of uh, singing elements to this metal ass feel and it was like nothing i'd ever heard um 
but if you were to talk to me at like 13, 14, a lot of y'all would have thought I was a poser. Um, I didn't have easy access to music, so I kind of heard a lot of Slipknot singles at that era. Um, I remember the Volume 3 drops, heard all the singles. I mean, I used to have like a choreographed fucking dance to go along with Before I Forget. Oh, no, not Before I Get, Duality. The push my fingers into... Anyway, um, that whole part was... That, that whole thing, I think Slipknot was really cool to me. I did listen to the full Volume 3 album at that period of my life, and I didn't appreciate it. I heard all the singles off of Iowa, never heard the full album. I don't know, I just thought it was really cool. Nine guys in masks creating this, like, melange of sound that, honestly, once you really sat there and listened to, it's like organized chaos in a way, but always really fun, always really tapping into that angsty part of me. Like, I really like pretty much anything i'd heard of slipknot at that point i wasn't as into the vermilion the softer no the hard one i like the soft one anyway uh, we reviewed that whole album so we ended up actually reviewing volume three on this channel and i would like to do more of their work because of just simple curiosity so if you want to see more slipknot reviews tell me what the next one i should review is since nothing can be in order at this point anyway um then uh i kind of fell off i remember being a hater in 2008 and i remember hearing something like how joey laid down all the drums before like the entire recording of the fourth album and i don't know why but that seemed stupid to me at the time this is like a long time ago me so we can't judge me today for that but for real i, I don't know why I, it seemed like nobody wanted to hear that album so i was trying to be a cool kid and i don't want to hear that album either by the time the gray album dropped i was like far away from slipknot or metal at any way just in my personal taste so i kind of slept on that one and then uh yeah this album came out and i saw the title and i'm like you know it'd be really 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 fun i want to review a slipknot album and i say that because we had done at this point since since 2016 we did the volume three album and i read a lot about slipknot their history um some of the crazy stuff Corey did on the iowa project recording sessions just um i have colleagues that are really into them and i've learned so much about how incredible or why so many people i guess find slipknot to be incredible and then if we just want to talk metrically they're literally one of the biggest bands on earth today by numbers which is pretty fantastic like to me it's pretty awesome that a band like slipknot that so many old foggy haters when i was young would hate it on for me even liking them oh you don't know shit because you listen to slipknot type of crap that is really amazing to me that like they're still around um i mean anyway y'all y'all get what i mean so um at this point i was just really curious to see what growing up slipknot could be and i say that because they're on their 40s except for the drummer and i don't really know if tortilla man has been revealed yet i kind of looked into him i was super curious but um he might have been i haven't really paid that much attention still joy's replacements like a lot younger than the rest of the band but i did do a stone sour review a couple of years back um in 2017 for that album that dropped and it was not very popular a lot of people disliked that one so i guess i pissed people off but i found Corey to be a little bit whiny in a way that i didn't enjoy back then but in all fairness i may have been a hater and if i re-listen to the album i don't know how i'd feel today still my colleague said to me before going into this project the message of this album was really important and interesting to her so i guess it took a little extra effort to focus on the message of this album in general because she felt like it all made sense and that got me really curious and uh yeah now i feel like i'm just dragging stuff on so sorry if that was a little bit boring i'm gonna move into the title and the cover the cover doesn't do a lot for me it's like a person with a mask on black it just kind of looks horror-y and i guess like anything i don't know i don't know if it looks like a slim album cover to me it just looks like any other album cover i like the retro-y feel to it like it looks like faded paper or whatever like an old cd almost and i like the title a lot more i'm not gonna lie the title was one of the biggest reasons I was interested in this project in the first place because We Are Not Your Kind is fascinating. Marilyn Manson took a, took a similar approach, I feel, on his latest last project with some of the themes like we are different, we are the outcasts, we are, we are not your kind. And if I had to say there was a, 
a theme to how I feel as I venture across middle class America in my current life. Uh, and I include Canada and America for this, let's say middle class Western world. Um, I feel like we are not your kind. Me and my peeps who uh, happen to be scattered throughout it, we are just not like that. So when I hear this kind of anti conformity messaging, it really appeals to me because that part of my character still exists to the way that it always has. Um, and I guess as I'm forced to conform more in my day to day, because at the end of the day, you have to make some practical ass growing ass decisions sometimes. Um, I find music like this or just thematically approaching certain subjects like this a way for me to escape and relate as like a fully grown adult just trying to deal with the modern anxieties of life. Um, so I really like the title. It made me want to hear what Corey had to say on this project. And on that note, we're going to break this into two parts. So I'm going to do like the first half of the album, maybe a song shifted over or whatever. And then the second half, because it's going to take a while as I talk and break down all the songs. And uh, yeah, let's start with insert coin. Like, uh, this is almost entirely an instrumental piece. It's got this, like, kind of policy, like, kind of feel to it going on. And it feels like the beginning of something. And if you think about the title, Insert Coin, I mean, it's like the start of a video game in like an arcade, you know, a start of an adventure of some kind. You would insert a coin to get your payment or maybe once upon a time, even rides and stuff had that. So it's an interesting kind of like idea, like get ready for an adventure. But then you get this like build up and it's almost like a minute and 40 seconds of this policy build up. And uh, it kind of adds a couple more layers as it, it, it goes along. But what I can say is, is it got me hyped up. It got me ready to listen to this album. And I think if you're going to make an album and you really want to draw listeners in, the intro track actually does have a purpose. I guess you can come in strong with a banger of a song and really get people listening. And that's something like you would see on like a Nickelback project where, bam, first song just hooks you. In this regard, with this intro approach, which I prefer, I like the intro on a good album, you get the opportunity to take me where prior to like recording this, I spent the morning listening to Roots and like musically I might be all over just in kind of the nature of what I do on this channel. So the Roots and Slipknot do not sound at all alike. So having this little intro giving me almost this palate cleanser for life to take my brain out of my world, you know, worrying about laundry and this and that and bringing me, <laughs> insert coin. That's what I did at the laundry machine just before I recorded this. My clothes are in the dryer right now. Um, and uh, basically, I thought it was a cool like build up. And then you get the one lyric. I'm counting all the killers, which he just kind of says in like this almost braggadocious, like I'm counting all the killers. Now, apparently that's in the solely for the song, like way at the other end of the album. And I might forget to even bring that up. So if I do, just so you know, I was paying attention. This is like a way to kind of tie the album in. So just on that note, there is also the possible idea that this serves because you'll see a couple of points that these little minute long -y tracks kind of serve as an intro to flow into the next song so i didn't actually test it and maybe i'll try it a little bit when we get to the end of the project but it might be to aim for the infinity album experience where if you were to keep the album on repeat all you wouldn't really i'd be able to clearly identify the end of the album Instead, when you get to the end and you start the next track again, it just makes sense and it almost feels like this encompassing loop. And given the theme of the album and what he's describing his whole way through, that's a possibility to reflect the cycles of, you know, what he talks about on this project. So I thought that was super nifty and a really good start to everything. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a 4.25. Oh, it also gets really ominous when that lyric comes in. Like it just changes in tone a little bit. Either way, let's move on to the first. Uh, I believe it's the first single too, but where they revealed the new masks as we talk about Unsainted. I can't say what I was expecting except for like, I guess this, this song is what I was expecting. Maybe not the symphonic singy intro, but the mix of like cool singy choruses, growly rappy verses. It was like, if you were a person like me who kind of fell off after volume three, 
came back to Slipknot. It's currently really vibing on this new metal resurgence, which is the best part of the 90s comeback that is happening. I'm really hoping long jean shorts become fashionable again. But yo, my fashion stayed in the late 90s. So for like three or four years, I could be hip in the near future, which is which is pretty cool to an old man like me. But um watching like listening to this it got me kind of hyped um so i did see the music video back when it dropped i'm not gonna lie so this wasn't like the first time i've heard and seen it but uh oh also i recognize the album came out like a month ago but for the sake of like everything i more or less listened to most of it in the last couple of days preparing for this review like it had just come out on friday so I recognize all of y'all have actually probably consumed this album a lot more and a lot more properly than I have. So I'm bringing that up now. I'm just rolling with it. But what that does mean is Genius is a little bit more flushed out. And I got a little bit of help see. So maybe I'm wrong about some stuff. And uh, anyway, moving along. I watched a video and I saw the masks and I'm I'm pretty sure it's Corey that has like the white mask with like he has the black thing in front and I'm like what a suave motherfucker I might be wrong maybe that's guitarist guy but one of them had the white mask and like just this like thing in front of his face I was like the coolest looking suavest motherfucker right there in the band I really enjoyed just how I've seen a few interviews of them talking about the masks and just hearing about the evolution of even like guar and stuff as these bands end up getting like these air conditioned built for performance masks and stuff like they're like freaking high tech um so i thought it was really cool to get that whole feel the video comes in really strong but that's all i'm gonna say about the video it was pretty standard it, it almost showcased hey guys we're back it looked really cool but i love the chorus thing the way the the, the like i'm a symphonic choir is going you know i'll never kill myself to save myself if i was gone but how was I, I was gone but how was i don't know i didn't come this far to sing so low i'm finally holding on to letting go you know and then i'll never kill myself to, anyway kind of repeats again and right away you're, st you're hit with powerful lyrics in my opinion i'll never kill myself to save my soul i was gone but how was i don't know like look at that right there it's just it almost feels like there's this strength going on like i am past whatever it was and i'm looking back on it now almost a little bit sad like i didn't realize what was going on i didn't traverse all of this distance in my own personal growth to to give up you know and to, to keep going on and so in a sense it's just like this chorus lays in this uplifting there is still struggle but almost i'm capable i'm not going to give into what it previously was so it's an interesting start to this album like almost letting you know off the jump things are okay and the verses he goes in a super growly rappy like i'm just weathering a rough patch another villain with the itch to scratch denial is the darkest when you live in a hole why does the hell make you feel so cold make a move when you pay for it pick a lord and you pray to it you're so demanding you want the truth from me but your stories don't read for me and that's an interesting series of lines to me because it kind of is very relatable to where i'm at in life so weathering rough patches i don't know i feel like my year is just broken into parts i feel like it's really hard and parts where i feel like i'm ethereal and life is really easy so sometimes you gotta when the wet when the rough patches come it just feels like it's weathering it's like i just gotta deal with it and i know it's gonna pass and you just handle it you know denial is the darkest when you live in a hole why does the hell make you feel so cold and that just you know goes into the isolation that comes with depression and anxiety and whatnot like i'm a person who struggles with this type of morose living all the time like my life has not been easy when i was young and even now when things are supposed to be good it's still not easy and sometimes you get lost in your mind and you know it feels really bad uh make a move and you pay for it pick a lord and you pray to it it's almost like no matter what you choose to do it's it's not going to make everyone happy and at the end of the day you're going to be probably dealing with some level of opposition or complication that spirals it back like yo even pursuing your dreams the way people treat you and stuff it, it gets complicated to manage the emotions even for myself you know it's you know it's tripping me out and some of y'all might think this is really stupid but for the last like year i've been really working on my attitude to be more understanding to be less of a i guess a dick in how i treat people to be less of a intellectual snob to maybe 
validate the ideas other people have to say a lot more so that i can be more likable and amiable will say and it's been working and now everybody likes me and thinks i'm awesome at work and things like that and it's like i don't know how to process it it's really freaking whack to me and so like even like when you make moves <laughs> there's still some consequence there's still something i don't know it's just complicated so hearing cory struggle here a little bit and point out that like no matter what you do it almost seems like you get back there and then get back to that hook but no i'm not gonna kill myself to save myself i'm gonna be stronger than that i don't know maybe i'm misinterpreting it but i took it in such an encouraging kind of way i love the way he starts the second verse too indecision overload keep a buckle on the devil your eyes on the road reaching out for the hand of god but did you think you'd shake your own Ooh, you know like first of all indecision overload gosh there's so many choices so many options it's so hard to commit to the specific things we need to do even if you have projects and stuff just to work on the right things is complicated and you end up crippling through your inability like sometimes i know i got 84 things to do and instead of doing any of them i just sit there and do literally nothing i don't even mean fuck around i mean i'm moments where i just stare at like the screen for like 15 minutes and i don't do anything because i'm just done i don't know um i guess it's gonna be one of those confessional episodes because Corey elicited this out of me with his words not in my it the whole band is doing a whole bunch of stuff too the percussion is absolutely fantastic you can hear about the drumming and that of like clown and friend um it's really awesome just the overall vibe i love the grandiose hook and just the aggressive slap you in the face feel of the uh, the verses just everything fits because the verses is really looking more into the complicated emotions which warrant the more turmoil which is almost represented through this music simultaneously with that triumphant nature of of like the hook it almost adds like that god feel to it like god saving you in some way i don't know when i hear angelic choir type vocals that's what i picture and i just thought it was really really cool the second verse just kind of again focuses more on how your own choices and your own perception gets complicated you know and i love the narcissism line reaching out for the hand of god but did you think you'd shake your own you know like sometimes it is easy to have bad expectations with relation to why you do things or whatnot or maybe just build yourself up to be this martyr image in your own mind i like at the end when he goes myopic cannot see straight and i think it's one of the backup vocal dudes saying myopic and Corey's responding dystopic one sin too late you gotta lie if you want to believe but your bibles don't work on me and so i feel like at the end of this little journey that we're going on here we see it flip up and it's like as people propose their truth and their solution and their whatever it's almost like realizing that everybody's as complicated and all the shit that's flowing around isn't necessarily helping you know i don't know if i'm maybe going too far with that still the bridge kicks in also and it really flips up into a different vibe a little bit uh did you think you could win and fill me in did you think you could do it again i'm not your sin i was all that you wanted and more but you didn't want me i was more than you thought i could be so i'm setting you free and you get this like this like other side now where it's almost like Corey's snapping back because that is a side of it it's almost like people take for granted who you are or what you're dealing or what you're going through and i imagine that if Corey has been honest with his feelings or whoever it is i, I believe it's about Corey because he wrote he's the vocalist so i'm just gonna say his name um but it's almost like yo just be sometimes I have a negative attitude or like a, i don't know i can again explain it more through how i connect to it and people it's like people want you when you're positive and you're at your best but when you try to tell people you're not okay and it's challenging or whatever and this doesn't apply to everybody in my life it's just some people might not be so accommodating to it um so when you get to that so i'm setting you free you've killed the saint in me how dare you murder me you've killed the saint in me it's almost like what he's saying here is with the relationship and how people see him or whatever maybe people lifted him up to like this high esteem like you're supposed to be this great person you're supposed to achieve these heights but then through all of the things he's experienced he's like ah but when you get the real me it comes with all of this darkness it comes with all of this so in a sense now that the darkness is what is seen and taking over 
um the, i mean from a perception point of view it's like you've killed the saint all you see is the the awful the dark the the depression if i'm not mistaken Corey went through a divorce recently so i don't know if it's about that but if you've gone through a, a, a deep loss like that in your life whether it's friends whether it's bandmates if i'm not mistaken uh, chris fenn i think that's his name anyway one of the guys is currently suing slipknot over unpaid royalties so if you think about perhaps some of the experiences going on like that um maybe he's felt like people have taken advantage and taken him for granted and the point is is it's almost like when you say unsainted here it's like you're shedding off the bullshit of what people expect from you and embracing yourself for like who you really is i feel like it's this kind of really cool uplifting like fuck it be yourself don't try to be that hero to other people type thing don't try to be anything don't martyr and then you think back to the hook i'll never kill myself to save my soul i won't martyr my personality and my integrity to save my soul to be what you think i need to be to get to heaven or to be accepted in society and shit uh, and i'm like damn that's actually a really well written song because in a sense that you almost get like a, a reveal experience in terms of the hook kicking in there and having almost a new meaning once you get to that bridge and I'm, i don't know and then it ends and it's heavy and it's cool and it really just got me stoked i'm like when was the last time i got this excited for a slipknot song um i don't know if it's a hundred percent nostalgia or love i think there are better songs on this album too so i'm only gonna give this one a 4.35 because i do think it gets better than this track i think this is a great single i think it serves its role well thematically is really strong and it fits the project and from like the way the project flows um content wise it's a really important start because it has this almost conclusive reassuring feel before we go into the darker emotions that will get explored in later tracks so that's that's my feelings at the start of this look i'm, I'm i might be grading this i don't know i feel like i'm i downgraded everything because i felt like the new metal nostalgia factor in me makes me explicitly like this sound more than i'm supposed to i don't know i don't think my grade matters it's pretty arbitrary it's mostly the conversation all right let's talk about the next track birth of the cruel can we just talk about for a quick second here um how versatile Corey taylor's voice is um i believe i saw online he can do five and a half octaves worth of notes which is pretty substantial and in the up there range of human talent um he can also just seamlessly go between growly voice to clean vocals in a way that is remarkably impressive and if nothing else Corey taylor should be up there when people talk about great vocalists because i think he's pretty impressive and then when you uh, anyway i don't really know that this is the crowd i have to convince about Corey taylor singing but i think it has to be said um i couldn't figure out what was sampled at the beginning i don't know if anybody uh was able to figure it out but it feels like they sampled in some shit let him crave understanding let him crave your wisdom let him crave let him be provoked father by self-control well, that's an interesting point of view so it's like um creating a conflict of craving a bunch of stuff but having it there almost for the sake of employing self-control and having this desire of something that's just out of reach and that's just a, a cool context setter and then it just flows in and cory singing is drastically different it's got for the verses it's got like this slower like i'm just a chud whatever i can't sing it but like it's just slower and calmer and eerie almost like it sucks you in you know and i have to say i like his language use um just from like a literary perspective um one of my favorite parts of listening to this album has to be just the literal choice of words that get used to describe stuff like i bet in another life Corey taylor would have been an ill mc spitting some proper rhymes in hip-hop and i don't know if did a guy ever do like a rap project that's like explicitly hip-hop if not i would like to see that if you would like to see that let me know if that exists also let me know because i'd like to hear that anyway so in this track um i mean i think the i think we're taking we're kind of going into a story on this album so unsainted presents almost the end and then we go back a little bit uh to the beginning 
uh, is what I think is happening here. So I'm just a Judas looking for a silver line and tomorrow is still a step behind. Hey, hey, drama, I'd love to be a waste of your time. Oh no, thanks so much for wasting mine. So it feels a little bit like a person in disarray, making untrustworthy, unsavory choices. The future's behind you. Everything feels bleak and hopeless. Drama's a constant force. And you know, it sets you up in a place where maybe you're you're just in a self-destructive cycle and if we, and i think that's a, a, what he's trying to establish here so hear me out let's hear it for the damage who understands but the broken and i think he like picks up the vocals here and it gets into like a heavier tone uh who understands but the broken developed in the arms of spite i'm all fucked up and i'll make it look good adrenaline sight tonight and i think that's an interesting point too because when you are in that like almost broken self-destructive place what do you do it's almost like you go hard in in making poor choices and if you are somebody who does it well i can tell you one thing you can make all the worst choices look real fun and real entertaining in a way where it becomes almost appealing almost addictive well definitely addictive and i like how he ties it in with adrenaline like the whole point is to get this rush to feel and everything but all laced for the damaged and people who are full of spite and whatnot it's just i find it really relatable i find it understandable from like when i'm in my darker really not thinking clearly points of views like this just pictures me hating everything wanting to go do some dumbass shit that can destroy my world and i really appreciate that and then i like the word play on i'm overthrowing i'm over your throne i'm over it so like i'm overthrowing which is often you overthrow a throne which is why the next line is kind of cool because it's almost like you take out a government or an authority figure or a guiding force but in the sense it's like you are feeling discarded away from that throne it's like you're pushed away from this glorified thing and then i'm over it like fuck all y'all i'm ready to go in so i feel like we've moved back in time to some of the darker feelings that were defeated a little bit in the hook of unsainted or maybe it's just the continuation where unsainted starts you off where you know you're better than this and you feel yourself starting to slip and here it's exploring the slipping of all of this um I'm sick, sickened, I'm sickening, I'm stricken by the fist. Like, yo, that's rap bars in my opinion. Like, sick, sickened, I'm sickening, I'm stricken by the fist. Blessed the fires that I borrow me and listen to this. The lesson is never underestimate the agony, death of a full birth of the cruel. I don't know, it's fucking high to me. I hear it like rap when I like read it. I don't know if you guys thought that was bad. That's totally okay. But it has this rhythmic flair to the way he, I mean, I know it's the chorus, but like it has this rhythmic flair and word affiliation that it just appeals to me but sick sickened i'm sickening i'm stricken by the fist it's just like i'm i'm being hit by this thing it's taking over me um don't underestimate the pain because at the end of the day that kills off the fool birth of the cruel death of a fool birth of a cruel because when you feel in dark you feel like a foolish person you feel like the world is betraying you and you trying to believe in the greater good or people looking out for you or any of these things is makes you a fool so to counteract that you embrace the hate and you lash out and you do all the darkity dark things and it's not really a good thing so i think it really summarizes sufficiently almost how cruelty comes to be it's like in a fear of this anxiety of being taken advantage of you lash out first you know remember how you spent the best of forever in a state of pure disease it was another thing altogether to forget that you brought out the worst in me interesting you know it's almost like he's looking back at other people who are kind of maybe being in pain with him and eliciting this type of stuff also going on with it and you know we are the bitter the maladjusted of mice fighting off a generation too uptight we're all dressed up with nobody to kill the rhetoric stops tonight and man i think he's expanding this idea that this is kind of something that a lot of people are going through and a lot of it has to do with the attitude of how people are treated and judged especially from the top-down approach that society is either way i thought it was super relatable super awesome there's a little bridge that kicks in there now is not the time for denying shifting the focus to scare let's not forget we're all guilty all three dimensions polluted by earnest despair and that's a fascinating point too because it's like in the middle of this a quick reminder that everybody's involved that even if you're hating everything and whatever there's still a part of it that is you and 
maybe it's almost like breaking the third wall a little bit um, by pointing out that even if you feel this whole way, you need to remember in the back of your mind that all this despair, everything, we are all contributing to it as much as it affects us directly. I thought it was cool. And then it kind of has that sample thing play out again at the end. I still uh, couldn't figure out what the sample is from. And yeah, I really enjoyed this song. I thought it was another 4.25. I felt like it was equally as good as the last song, but also extremely different. Um, really showing off like like the first song had more of, I guess, a classic -y feel. Like it reminded me of the earlier stuff, whereas Birth of the Cruel maybe made me feel a little bit more of a volume three vibe. Now, if y'all don't agree with me, that's totally fine. This is just kind of from what I've heard of their music, the two vibes that I got off so far. Anyway, next up, we have a little bit of an interlude thing called Death Because of Death. I don't know if y'all know or care about this, but Mr. Jim Root spoke with the Kerrang! magazine and he was like, yo, this track is kind of from the mind of Clown and Clown is, uh, you know, showing off his songwriting skills here. And I guess that makes sense. It's got a very percussive build up, right? It kind of comes in and then the drums kick in and then even vocally, it's just very simple. It's very easy death because of death because of you and it just repeats that over until the last one when it's like i think a girl or something cuts in and it's like death because of you and that's just kind of all it is is it almost serves as a little bit of a intro and a build up to the next track it's not very long it's a minute and 20 seconds but i feel like it's sonically an extremely entertaining and beautiful thing to listen to and i like the way it it flows thematically so if you think about what we just learned on the last track right um you you kind of hate the conformity of life and you break off into your own world and then as you're trying to avoid being fool and embracing the cruel and everything in the darkness and even remembering there's a little bit of accountability in it if you take that last little idea and really expound it and really just ruminate which i think is kind of something he's trying to exemplify here too is the rumination an idea that gets stuck in your mind and plays over and over again so i guess you could say one of the themes of the last song is death because of death because of you it just repeats and it repeats like you're stuck on that line like you, you can't get it out of your head and it's impacting you in like a darker or more significant way so i thought that was sick i thought it was a really excellent little intro and honestly it's the best thing i heard on the album so far from like a sonic perspective i thought it was eerie it was very unexpected um i don't know if they do a lot of interludes on all their other albums but i thought it was, it was like really nice it just fit really good i migrating almost thematically on the album i don't know if it was like an album theme shift but i feel like it takes the tone and it preps you and gets you ready for the next track so i gave this a 4.5 on 5 and i thought it was really good and why don't we move on and talk about neo forte neo forte fuck <laughs> I like this song a lot, a lot, a lot. This hit me in the new metals proper. Um, it reminded me a lot of Spit It Out, which is one of my favorite songs. So it really hit me up. I don't know if it reminds you of that track, but it's something about the structure. Like if Spit It Out had been a five minute song, it could have been composed something like this. Um, as far as the title goes, it's an interesting, right? Because Nero, Nero Forte. Um, so apparently those are Italian words that mean strong black. And I guess that could be like in regards to coffee or something. I don't know. Also, Nero is the Roman emperor. Uh, so he did a bunch of militaristic stuff. And, you know, somebody, uh, Forte apparently also means something that a person can excel at. So if you look at that line in the pre-chorus, that's what you do best. It could be kind of expanding on the word Forte, which... I didn't know, honestly, that I'd be looking into word etymology to understand stuff. Thanks, genius person. But um, I think the fact that we have to look a little bit into word etymology to understand what the hell Corey's going on about is awesome and just shows how skilled of a writer this man is. Um, the song kind of kicks in, like, watch this, and then it's just rap, man. You can call it what you want. Dude spitting rhymes in this. I'm never, I'm never enough. You bleed me dry, using me up, dissatisfied, and used another key to the empty spot. I'm sick as a fuck. I'm in my prime. What do you want? I guess it's time to see if you're lost in hell. You'll not find no peace. 
um i don't know there's not a whole lot to comment in terms of like what he's doing here it, well there's always stuff to comment he's basically capturing the emotion of feeling jaded abused like you can just picture him like fist clenched tight in pockets in my hoodie and i know where i need to go but the voice of reason can't say no it's in the eyes and the heart just the latest psycho off the charts and i question if this is looking maybe at his life a little bit in his career and how at his prime he was in his lowest like if i'm not mistaken during the ios sessions it was a really bad place in his life they're freaking um off the wall like off the walls in terms of popularity they're in their prime but meanwhile they're lost in hell like so when i'm looking at these lyrics it makes me kind of picture from what i've learned about how hard it used to kind of be for him before they i think sobered up and got to different points in their life but I would definitely recommend looking into the Iowa recording sessions if you haven't. It's like a truly remarkable music history anecdote I think anybody should care about because, you know, these guys went through a lot to create the art they wanted to create. Um, and then you get to like this awesome chorus which has like this singy like a home is like a home like yours is upside down it's being like sung out while the rappy growly too much animosity nobody does it better than the enemy is like spit under that and then you know hope like yours won't uh, help me now you can do your worst to me at the end of the day that's what you do best and then he kind of repeats that and it's like okay so your world your structure is really fucked up and you trying to impose that on me fine you can keep coming at it like that i'm already jaded and beat down i'm already expecting that but that's what you do best and i think about the middle class again when i hear stuff like that because again the middle class is something that's new for me and the social norms is like i saw a fascinating video by jj mccullough which broke down the middle class is like chosen conformity it's a bunch of people who all agree this is the way life should be and we should all do the same things for the same uh, results and this is just how we all like are going to function together so in a sense um if you don't really follow those rules there's a lot of chaos and there's also a lot of just fucked up hypocrisies in that culture which i guess can be frustrating if you aren't like ingrained already into it and it's all not second nature to you so hearing this um and seeing the judgment i see for people that don't play by the rules it just makes me picture Corey trying to relate or whoever it is trying to relate to the system and failing to do so and i just think that like you know the the judgment that comes from failure to do so it can be overwhelming to a point where you get something like in his hook and i thought it was just so again relatable sonically it's just so powerful and then it breaks into that aggressive rappy second verse you know i know and even if i didn't know i would lie so many would believe it stand up and resist the chains of all the people in belligerent sick restraint i wasn't enough etc but i know and even if i didn't know i would lie in a sense i picture this like people trying to tell you all the lines about how you can do better or how you can be better or how you can fit in better and so you know what you know because you hear it all the time and the truth is even if it doesn't make sense to you in some way you lie because it gets uh people off your back and then you behave in certain ways and you can just hide whatever you're feeling from the world because people will always believe that you're doing okay if you tell them and if you smile a lot and laugh a lot and make jokes and shit people really buy into that i don't know but then when i hear shit like i wasn't enough you bled me dry which way is up oh you're a lie and a fake i hope that truth is not too late i mean i picture just some of the situations in my past where folk have maybe taken advantage of who i am maybe not like professionally or whatever it's not specifics but sometimes people commodify you and, and drain you and that's your value and if you can't keep up or whatever and you feel a certain way it doesn't matter to them at that point it's, it's pointless so I, again him like standing up and fighting back in that last line i like the fact that he's like questioning is it too late it, i hope it's not too late maybe all the damage is done and this is something that should have been said way earlier but either way this is the situation where we are but you're a line of fake you know that's just kind of what you are and then it flows into you know i like that that's what you do best that gets repeated his like maniacal laugh appears at a certain point it's really it's really good um the bridge is fun why was it easy for you did did i deserve the abuse i i can't believe it i see through your bullshit you're so traumatic true to your form and it's really like again you almost recognizing that this person maybe you put faith in them maybe they're in a position of power over you maybe it's a record label maybe it's a significant other but this person 
who took from you made you feel a certain way and then realizing that they're a monster of sorts and i thought that was cool just kind of breaking through and recognizing that everything lied to you in a lot of ways i can imagine being a u.s citizen that's what it feels like to look at your government depending on what side of the the camp you're on either way this song blew me away it's gotten so many cool rhythmic flows on it the energy of it has me both head banging moshing and also wanting to wail out but like this one in particular really just my notes on this is this is like a delicious new metal chocolate bar like it's just so tasty to me it just really hit me in a way where from the first second i heard it i knew that this is going to be another slipknot song that i go back to time and time again so i gave it a five on five because it really is just dope it's like the five minute spit it out i did know i wanted anyway we can move on now with the project as we talk about critical darling now this song is one hell of an experience um i can say basically from neo forte on i feel like the entire album is like freaking a real step up from the first i feel like honestly the worst two songs on the album are honestly insane and birth of the cruel it's just my opinion and it just really gets better from here um critical darling is compositionally truly fascinating because they do like so many things like when you see it for me when i see songs as long as some of the songs are on this album I mean, you really need to make sure that the way you're putting this stuff together, both, I think if you're going to have vocals, tell some kind of a story, but then you need the music and stuff to kind of supplement it. So this one kind of starts off, I feel like it's a little harder, um, but not in the same kind of speedy way Neo Forte was. It's like a completely different vibe. But um, God's in a coma. Put faith in a life support. Running away won't feel the same if you reach your metaphysical last resort. And that's interesting there because it's it's it just kind of feels like at the end of the day you're running out of options and you know God's not helping you. Your faith is kind of going up to nothing. Running away isn't working. You're kind of at the end of your line. You know, uh, there's not many options left for you to deal with anything oh malevolence and purgatory give you pause it's a miracle you haven't broken any laws we are not entitled to surviving so keep your friends and your enemies thriving and uh with this it's like we have them kind of like focusing like it's kind of amazing that like you haven't fucked up too bad yet we're not gonna make it so at the very least motivate yourself by the fact that the people around you can kind of benefit off of what you're doing that's what i took from that which i think if you're in that crazy state of line and you're out the edge of your rope one of the things that will be a focal point is through your suffering other people are going to benefit and i like the fact that it's your friends and enemies so you don't even necessarily know who it is that you're benefiting at this point but still like you kind of include everybody just whoever it is you have a purpose and a value and then i like the good for you what a cliche just not true what a giveaway what comes now can't be the last one falling down so right before we go into the groovy pre-chorus bit it's like almost like this little self-awareness thing like you take a step out of like that mopey crap that we just had in the last part and you're like oh this again this same old thing but it almost feels like he's recognizing these behavioral patterns and he's kind of getting ready to flip it and he's um and i thought that was really cool and then it goes into the pre-chorus which is this groovy like every time and this happens i'm breaking a promise i'm made to a version of me and i really dig the rhythm there like it has a lot of control it's super tight like it's funky it's really nice why can't i covet and keep it away from the leeches who want to deceive and if you really look at what he's saying there it's again like you're almost picturing all of himself slipping down the dark despairs of this this pattern of negative behavior that he's been kind of documenting and exploring throughout this project and i feel like if you look at neo forte so death because of death because of you is what happens there the album transitions a little bit now it's like you have to recognize your own behaviors and then in neo forte it's like well fuck you you know you all made me like this and then in critical darling it's like kind of flipping so after you've caused your little shit storm you're now taking a step back and watching yourself almost fall down into the depths of awful 
and I thought that was a game like just truly, truly interesting because thematically it's really honest and it's something that I've lived through myself. So I feel like he's almost documenting experiences I've had in my own life at this point. Um, what is coming has begun. It's something that you got to see. We lie and say that it's too late for redemption. Um, what is coming and then we, uh, what is coming has begun and ending I won't live to see. We tell ourselves it can't be helped. There's no heaven. And that's fascinating because it's almost like once you feel it creeping on, you can't stop it. And then you're willing to just lie to yourself and say shit like it can't be undone. It's like we, once you commit, to, I call it committing to sin. Like once in your mind, you've committed to sin. You've decided I'm going to do this bad thing because my manic state has said so. I must complete it. I must see through the action and there's no way around it. But in a sense, it's all crap. You're just kind of building up in your head. Um, and I think it's cool that he's able to almost build a whole song around owning that shit. Um, once again, we got suffocated in a sick perversion of a spider's web, crawling over all the spent digested pieces, celebrate the dead. Here come the judging eyes. Got to pave the world with your best intentions. I only wish you could picture a future that doesn't resemble your crazy inventions. So here it's like after the math, you know, you're feeling all the guilt and the shame and the weight of everything that's coming on with that situation. And everybody's judging you and you're feeling all sorts of crap. And it's really awful. That's what I take from that. And again, it's almost like you drop a bomb on your life well some people are probably gonna have opinions and it gets really complicated and you kind of just wish that their best intentions didn't just sound like fairy tales because i feel like people give you advice people try to help you but none of it just seems like it's relatable or translatable into your personal existence um and then it kind of does the chorusy thing again and we're about halfway through the song and it breaks into this really soft bridge where it changes and it goes like a mirror only works if you open your eyes but even then you have to understand what's inside the easy part is always hardest to see i know you'll get i know you'll never guess but darling you're so critical and what i really think is happening here is at this point he's kind of telling you that the truth of the matter is a lot of what you've just gone through is kind of in your head and you can't see that really this is you putting this on and that it's all kind of you that's driving this so that's the easy part because everyone else can see it but the truth is when you look at yourself in the mirror darling you're so critical but he kind of says it in a loose way where it could be about other people but i think it's about himself and then you know it flows in oh just a cave in the way to the catalyst just wait let the games begin gonna tell you about all about it for the savages and it flows back into the chorus and it just kind of sounds here like everything is imploding after that fact again you can't see that it's almost about yourself but we're gonna go back in and we're gonna get ready to deal with the savages of life and kind of go through this melancholy situation or surround ourselves with other hateful people i don't know either way i think it's really amazing and then it has a lot of like kind of grooves and shit that kick on through it plays through the bridge and chorus a whole i mean the chorus and the pre-chorus again and then kind of ends on this long like critical you know just kind of pointing it out and drilling home that at the end of the day you are your own worst critic is what at least I'm interpreting from this track so i think you go through this whole experience of watching yourself slip down and the bomb and everything the negative reinforcing behavior only to realize at the end of the day that it's the person in the mirror yourself that's really the driving catalyst of it i think it's a beautifully put together song that takes some of the emotions brought forth in neo forte flips them on her head and almost internalizes them anyway I gave this track a 4.5. It's pretty amazing, pretty easy to listen to for six and a half minutes. Pretty engaging, and it builds up nicely to follow up for a completely novel experience with A Liar's Funeral. This is a, uh, a very slow song in terms of literal like speed, but what it maybe lacks for in speed, I don't know if that's important to you. It brings in with this superb intensity slow hitting kind of drums and notes and this super heavy heavy tone to it that immediately kicks in and lets you know that this song is going to be a little bit different um than the rest of it but also you feel this pain and sorrow like immediately from where it's coming from so i look at it like prior to the last one we looked at criticism and you know we've looked at how people judge you how you judge yourself a little bit and then you get to like i think where we're at with a liar's funeral almost at your lowest 
darkest, most painful experience here. A season at an end, a harvest of seclusion and regret. The burning can begin, a period of ash is what you get. The quiet is a curse, but my respect was shown to you by force. Another day too late, another neck too eager for the rope. And man, it's just like, you feel somebody here who doesn't want to be around people. Like the idea of the quiet that he's showing, the quiet that's a curse, this respect from his maybe quiet and not speaking out the way he's supposed to show him a force that just feels like this is a guy who's been beaten almost into this morose, subdued, broken situation. But then he does his liar and just you feel the pain. You feel it like, I don't know the way he the mental space he must have been in when he just recorded just that one word and just like he's letting you know that he thinks either you're a liar but i think the liar also kind of evolves a bit so at first it just kind of maybe is I've, I've shown you this respect or whatever this is just me trying to do whatever and in response you're just a fucking liar you know you're all liars the way you treat it it's like just a little tie-in but we get into the next verse which also kind of has that somber singing because he's very somber and how he's singing this um yesterday was hard tomorrow's just a promise that the same when friends have all subscribed to spitting on the ground to say my name and so i think he's kind of looking now at the situation so maybe time has passed since the bombs got dropped in the last one and if you're a person who's ever gone through some self-destructive behaviors you're gonna find out that maybe not everybody likes you when you're done a lot of people will smile to your face or whatever but the second they don't need to know you it's gone and then the truth is there's still people that are gonna put dirt on my name to the day i die just because of some of the foolisher things i've done in my past and to your face people will be your friends and whatnot but you know at the end of the day what they really think about you is something you're only going to find out after and in a lot of cases people who claim to be down are only down up until they realize who you are and it's like yeah yeah i understand i can be your friend through the darkest of times until the darkest of times come and then they don't like it um fire on the ice december in the summer kills the heart your hate is no surprise i guess i have to die to play my part there it's like I mean, the fire on the ice, December and the summer, it's whatever. It's kind of like, it sucks when it's cold. But your hate is no surprise. I guess I have to die to play my part. In that part, it's like, oh, for my personality, for the, the person I am, if I'm not willing to kill off that semblance of what you don't like, my negativity, who I have to be, in order for me to be around you, I have to almost go to the noose. I almost have to kill off this part of my soul. So were you really a friend or were you a liar? And then um, in the third verse, you know, close your eyes and join the blind, slit your wrist for peace of mind, turn your back and show us the truth. There's only one way to remember it for you. Burn, burn, burn the liar. And then it repeats that for a, a little bit. And I think what he's trying to do here is show that through the conformity and hiding who you are in order to fit in with other people, in order to make other people think you're a certain way, again, it's something I've been struggling with where like nobody really likes complainers, so fine, you can't complain. Nobody really likes negativity, that's fine, but at the same time, it goes to a point where nobody even likes it if you're having a bad stress day. So like every day we all smiling. I know I saw some studies, although pop science is what it is, that indicate people who smile the most at work also go home and drink a whole bunch. And uh, maybe some of these conformist tactics of having to hide our negativity and darkness aren't healthy for proper human relationships maybe there's just smarter ways but so there's only one way to remember it for you burn burn the liar um i guess what it is is uh what i picture here is people turning their back on you and heathenistically treating so treating you like the heathen so in this point the burn the liar is actually him or the person that is being judged by everyone so basically you have to conform and, and give up the true sense of your soul to become this complacent pleb like figure and the when you turn around you have to join everybody almost and burn off the liar this this part of your soul this darkness the the guy that might be spitting truth that nobody wants to hear which you know kill that liar and then it's very heavy and it's really dark and then 
you get a little chorus hold the weight never trust the one beside you carried away you know just as much as i do and i like that i like the fact that even in the midst of everything he's humble enough to be like i don't know anymore we all know the same we all have access to the same information you know hold the weight do it all for what you really love carried away use up use you up until you've had enough never and then it repeats that and that's interesting because one of the narratives i receive is that because i love my life in the sense that i enjoy reviewing albums and making music that this is fun all the time i mean it's fun but like my whole weekend has been sitting in this this very chair here listening to the albums then we record them then i edit them and then it's like the next one and the next one so ultimately it's fun but when it's for somebody else right then they're taxing you they'll convince you to tap into what you love to drain you so imagine you're trying to just make an album to appease the record overlords or your boss is trying to tap into your creative talents to to gain from it or whatever i don't know ultimately i just feel like in a lot of cases the world is around there to take from you as long as you play ball and again i don't mean everybody but a lot of people are out there and they'll keep you around as long as you're willing to play ball and contribute to the cause you know and then we get to that little bridge at the end true victims and survivors learn to make war don't want to be the sad man singing anymore i did it all wrong so i'd get it all right we're wasting all the candles the dead need no light and that's interesting because the idea of true victims and survivors learn to make war so people who've gone through all the darkest of dark and make it through understand that to avoid that you may need to go to war with certain status quos is what i took from that which i thought was powerful he doesn't want to be sad he doesn't want to have to be this fake fuck in the middle of this world he wants to be able to stand up he feels like in his efforts to do things right he chose to do all the wrong things maybe to appease other people and then the idea we're wasting all the candles the dead need no light if you have to kill Kill off who you are to achieve anything then is it really worth it and then you get to that painful ass liar at the end and i really do think that by the end of this when we think about the liar it's almost this internalized thing it's almost like if you look at all of the feelings the feelings that other people are wrong that the way that you're expected to be is incorrect you're a liar because you're, it is what it is is the status quo that we must all like kind of agree to and i don't know maybe i'm again missing the mark on it but i thought it was a truly remarkable song one that i really liked and found myself invigorated listening to relatable and really powerful message so five on five it's, it's really really good and uh at this point i think i'm gonna leave it for the end of part one because we still have uh the rest of the album to go through and uh, i'm looking forward to talking about all of that with you so that's the end of this path let me know what you thought in the comments so far we can have a little conversation if you make the effort to comment i'll make the effort to answer you otherwise you can feel free to subscribe to the channel for part two you can like the video if you did special thanks to the patrons is milka damsey chris prado jonathan barnes tj black hurricane linda williams coney sparks and yeah they support what we do help us get a new camera they're gonna help us get a website they get to tell us what albums to review so if you have some obscure ass weird ass two hour long album you want to see us cover patreon is the way to get it done and uh if you want to see us grow into something more popping it would really help um i also make music you can check that out in the description of this video and i look forward to hearing from you on that note i'm gonna go get ready to do part two